in the team. Then NTAI, you can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile device to watch NTA International on the get anywhere in the world. NTA International, your window to the world. NTA, you can't be doing And welcome to another amazing edition of your weekend. You know, I'm telling you, oh, you have to be hit and you have to be steamy. You have Hello, good evening, and thanks for joining us on another weekend file. We are live in Abuja. For eight months, academic activities at the nation's public universities were disrupted due to ASU strike. It is the longest in recent times, with the union tasking the federal government to meet long-standing demands towards boosting the welfare of lecturers and educational fortunes of the institutions. Following painstaking negotiations with the federal government and other stakeholders, ASU strike or ASU suspended the strike and returned to lecture halls. With these developments, Weekend File tonight looks at the situation at the campuses and, of course, lessons learned as lecturers and students battle the pressure to meet up with lost academic calendar. We will bring you updates from Zones plus studio discussion with Dr. Abubakar Umar Kari, Associate Professor of Political Sociology and Dean, Students Affairs, University of Abuja. I am Kene Ima Aburike. The news now. The federal government is demonstrating its commitment to deliver a sustainable food security program in line with global best practice in the agricultural food chain. Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, gave this indication during an inspection visit of the ongoing construction works on the Agricultural Machinery and Equipment Development Institute, Amedi Lafia. Achigile Magaji reports. This for the North Central is one of the six across the country's geopolitical zones for the purpose of research, design and fabrication of agricultural machinery, which will see a shift from manner-dependent agriculture to mechanized one. The project, whose groundbreaking and foundation laying ceremony took place in August this year, has seen three months down the line, a feat which the Chief of Staff to the President says is a journey so far so good. Board Grace, 2024, the end of this administration is a good plan. This will be mission and finish. Try to contribute to raising the level of agricultural production and value chain in this country. For the hosts and executive vice chairman, National Agency for Science, Engineering and Infrastructure, NASENI, Support from the presidency has been the motivating factor. Uh, we are also collaborating with a uh, very uh, important uh, arm of uh, the Hashemite Kingdom of uh, Jordan, also in advanced agriculture, responsibility, and some greenhouse implementation. And that, of course, of uh, Italian, the Lorenzo of the uh, these people have visited this site, they have made their own recommendation, they have seen progress of work and uh, what really things will happen during this plan. Meanwhile, at a court visit on Governor Abdullah Isule, the governor expressed appreciation to the federal government for the number of its projects in the state, impacting positively on its socio-economic development. They left with a commitment to sustain the synergy for the common purpose of improving quality of life of the people. Achigil Magaji, NT News. 
Still on agriculture, Nigeria and Mexico have signed a pact to allow for the import and export of hibiscus, popularly called Zobu. Our correspondent Musa Aliyu, who is in Mexico, reports that Nigeria lost millions of dollars when the country was suspended from exports of the produce. Hibiscus known as Flor de Jamaica here in Mexico, has become part of the food and drinks for Latin Americans. Nigeria was the major supplier of the flower not until 2017 when the Mexican authorities and that of Nigeria agreed to suspend the business. The suspension was due to issues relating to pest infestation and contamination. The suspension caused protracted dislocations in business to business activities around hibiscus in our country. Now, Nigeria has put her house in order and work plan agreement has been signed between the two countries. The objective of the federal government of Nigeria is to expand its participatory cooperation and transaction with Mexico beyond hibiscus. The people and economies of the two countries stand to gain more if we diversify our portfolio. So the trust that we grant always to our counterparts from Nigeria is absolute and we want for you to have a good example of this kind of international agreement. Anything you bring to Nigeria you can be sure of red-made markets. Your people are in a state called Gombe right now, helping them to do mechanized farming. With the signing of the agreement, the road is free for shipment of Nigerian hibiscus to Mexico. However, the Mexican authorities emphasize that quality and standard remain paramount. Musa Baba Aliyu. NTA News. Let's go to security matters where the United Nations UN Under Secretary General for Peace Operations, Jean Pierre Lacroix, is seeking for increased participation of the Nigerian armed forces in the ongoing peacekeeping operations spearheaded by the UN. The UN Under Secretary General for Peace Operations started this while on a working visit to the Chief of Defense Staff, General Lucky Irabor, at the Defense Headquarters, Abuja. He noted that the deteriorating security challenges in most of the UN missions across the globe requires more collaborative efforts between UN and affected countries. Nigeria is uh, one of the most important partners of the United Nations, certainly uh, a critical partner when it comes to peace efforts in Africa. So we count on your country and we're extremely grateful for the uh, support that Nigeria extends to the UN and in particular to UN peacekeeping. I fully appreciate your work and the entire UN system for the contributions it made to the stability of um, the world and the African star region in particular. The Chief of Defense Staff acknowledged that Nigeria's deployment of troops in past UN peacekeeping operations has enabled the force to build the much needed defense capabilities to address emerging security threats. And to pave way for peaceful Yuletide festivities and the ongoing electioneering campaigns nationwide, the Nigerian army, supported by other security components, has commenced various operations across hotspots throughout the country. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya disclosed this during lunch with troops of the Theater Command North East Operation Halinkai at my Malari Military Cantonment, Maiduguri. Mohammed Ibrahim reports. Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya had, during this weekend visit, identified with troops engaged in counterinsurgency operations at Baga in Kukawa local government area of Borno State and inaugurated Maternity and Child Health Center, Doctors' Lodge and Regimental Sergeant Major's Quarters. 
while hosting top brass commanders, sector commanders, and senior officers of Theater Command Operation Harding Kai and those of Multinational Joint Task Force to a launch. General Yahya expressed appreciation of the Army High Command to the country's president for providing all the needed resources as well as the collaborative efforts of the Air Force, Navy, and other sister security agencies, including the troops that have led to successes achieved in various security operations across the country. The five presidents achieved were not present alive and vigilant and aggressive of what we do. And in accordance with our point of conduct and rule of engagement, the very teaching of professional idol and the real army are very valid of being alive every time. The Army Chief assured Nigerians that the military will not rest on its oars in providing security with the coming Yuletide and for the elections in 2023. In Meduguri, Muhammad Ibrahim, NTA News. In politics, the All Progressives Congress, APC, and Nasara State has flagged off its campaign with a mandate to mobilize grassroots support to ensure victory of all APC candidates at the 2023 general elections. Aliyu Tijani reports that the national chairman of APC, Senator Abdullahi Adamu, and the chief of staff to the president, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, joined Governor Abdullahi Suley to canvass votes for the party. Few months to the 2023 general elections, the All Progressives Congress, APC in Nasrallah State, has stepped up campaign to retain power next year. The gains recorded in infrastructure development, investment in agriculture and other sectors, Governor Abdullah Isuli says, are a manifestation of good governance his administration has provided for the people of the state. We are going to put in all our energy into this campaign until we deliver because we want to deliver, we want to come back, we want to continue with the good work that we are doing. National Chairman of APC, Senator Abdullah Adamu, Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, Senator Umaru Tanko Almakura, among other APC stalwarts, urged the people of the state to re-elect Governor Abdullah Isuli and ensure victory of all APC candidates in the 2023 elections. Four plus, oh, how can I? Four plus. He wants all the governors of APC to return. He wants more states to become APC states. And therefore, in that context, what does he want? Continuity in this state. Every committed and loyal member of APC will start his campaign right now. Day in, day out, night in, night out. The party says it will embark on door-to-door -door campaign to ensure overwhelming victory for the party next year. In Lafia, Aliu Tijani, NTA News. Meanwhile, women groups from the northwest geopolitical zone of the country have declared their support to PDP presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar, saying the former vice president has the capacity to tackle Nigeria's challenges. The groups made their position known during a PDP Northwest Women's Summit in Kano. Awal Salis reports that the theme of the summit is strengthening Northwest women's political participation through inclusion. The convergence of these women groups on Kano is to draw support for the presidential bid of PDP candidate Atiku Abubakar in the upcoming 2023 general elections while from the pdp standard bearer princess Yet atiku abubakar expressed the hope that with the support of women from the zone her husband is sure of winning the forthcoming general elections she said if given the mandate atiku abubakar will ensure women and youth inclusion in governance <laughs> We will take care of women, empower them, and issue capital to make them economically independent. Different stakeholders call on Nigerians, especially women and youth, to cast their votes for Atiku Abubakar to enable him to implement his roadmap for the economic recovery of the country. If elected, he will give 40% appointive position to women because women are trustworthy, just, and compassionate. 
the, the thinking that a woman should not uh, get a political position is not known because half of the religion, Islam, our Prophet Muhammad wasallam, said we should get it from Nana Aisha, his wife, who is a woman. So if that is not representation, I, we don't know what that is anymore. Wives of the PDP governorship candidates from the seven states in the zone participated in the summit in Kano, Awal Salisu, NTA News. You're watching Weekend File on the NTA. Let's go on break. Do stay with us. Our country will want better. Our country will want better. Who go do one for us? Mama Tokambo. Mama Tokambo. For a better Nigeria. Good life. Now you will want to. Now you will need to. Yes, so people of Nigeria, they jolly for the better. We want Shelley for we got to put Ashiwa Jupola Tinubu as the next president of Nigeria. Our people don't look the matter well. Only Pola Tinubu don't do what it everybody can see. Now you get the experience. Where you go fit you stick make our country better, make life sweet for we and our picking them. But Latin we don't gather better plan to chase down war for we use better school, the security of lives and property, unity and peace for all we country people, people of Nigeria. But this and many other better team where in don't want lies. It could make we all vote as you want to Latin for president of Nigeria. Vote as Shetima as vice president. Vote NPC, the party where she broom. Now you fighting here and there. We don't want it at all. Feeling people for day to work, we don't want it at all. And we don't want separation. You do your own, I do my own. Make it go. Michael, I, no, 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 no. We don't want that one. We may quarrel and disagree. But let it be on the table of dialogue. No blood, kills, war, violence. Let us stand with our nation as one people. And we must also stand for the armed forces, there are our husbands and wives, there are our brothers and sisters. Please support the armed forces whose lives are always on the front line to protect our nation. Nigeria is your own, Nigeria is mine, Nigeria is our own. And the witness is in our oneness. Our oneness is our strength. The next PMB Administration Scorecard Series will feature the Honorable Minister of Transportation, Engineer Mohazu Jaji Sambo. Date, Monday, November 7, 2022. Time, 11 a.m. Venue, National Press Center, Radio House, Abuja. The event will be covered live on NTA, FRCN, VON, and the social media handles of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Announcer, Mrs. Lydia Shehu Jafia, MNI, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The Road Infrastructure Tax Credit Scheme is one of the innovations uh, of this government in order to encourage investment in critical infrastructure. We have the one that NNPC is handling. Uh, there are 21 roads spread across the six geopolitical zones that are being handled. So this is a very uh, important scheme. It's leveraging on the um, capacity of the private sector to be more efficient in project delivery and um, I'm sure that by the time some of these roads become uh, operational it is going to uh, improve the competitiveness of Nigeria's economy and in the end reduce our imports. <laughs> Mr. Chef, I noticed that every time you're cooking, you always use the same Mr. Chef seasoning for all your dishes. How about me and Sushin, and for we roll, and for the seasoning? Hmm, my friend, this is something you're not telling me. Bye, Okay, I'll tell you a secret that I just discovered and would change your cooking forever. Mm. Say hello to Mr. Chef. With the new Mr. Chef All-Purpose Season, whatever the meal, Mr. Chef has got you covered. Mr. Chef All-Purpose Season make every meal taste like magic. The 
35th National Festival of Arts and Culture, a Fest 2022, with the theme Culture and Peaceful Coexistence, holds from Monday the 7th to Sunday 13th November 2022 at the National Stadium, National Institute for Sports, Lagos State. Time 10 a.m. daily. The official opening ceremony will take place on Wednesday 9th November 2022. Time 11 a.m. Venue Mobalaji Johnson Arena, formerly Onikon Stadium, Lagos State. Eko Nafes 2022, promoting culture and peaceful coexistence. Otumba Orushegun Urushewe OON, Chairman, National Festival Planning Committee, Announcer. Media Partners, NTA, AIT, LTV, FRCN, Eagle 7, Sports Radio, and Discount Television. Welcome back. As the 2023 general elections draw close, security reports point at security concerns about political thuggery as a potential threat to the elections. The threat concerns came to the fore at the release of the second and third quarter security situation report for Kaduna State. Anthony Forsen reports. Raising the threat political thuggery poses to the forthcoming general election is the director of Kaduna State Command of the Department of State Security. Sir, we are likely to be challenged by political togre. It's a thing that we really need to prepare for. So since we are all represented here from various communities, it's a message we need to take back home. The youths of various communities must be sensitized against talk because the little thing we have seen, which is just the beginning, is an indication that there is a lot to be done. Hence, they should be sensitized. The event, which was meant to present the second and third quarter 2022 security situation report of the state, gave heads of military formations in the state the opportunity to make inputs to the conversation. The air operations in this theater are heavily dependent on information that we receive from the security agencies and from the Kaduna State itself. And as noted, our air operations have improved in recent times. I want to appeal that the public come forward with information, especially when they see people planting devices in their farms or along uh, the roads that the military frequents. The security situation, especially in the southern part of Kaduna, has improved. For Operation Safe Haven, covering five local government areas of Kaduna State, which are Kaura, Kauru, Zangon Kachaf, Jamaa, and Sangha, we are going to continue to do what we are doing right. We are going to continue with our efforts to ensure that there is lasting peace, to ensure that the security improves in these five local government areas we are covering. For information on Cultural Minister Lai Mohamed and his host Nasr El Rufai, their position on fighting insecurity remained consistent. We begin to actually understand that we are dealing with a complex issue. This news didn't start yesterday, but we finally got a very firm handle on them. The Northwest Theater Command will enable a holistic approach to counter insurgency operations across the affected states and the enhanced coordination of the resources of the armed forces, the police, the SSS, our respective state vigilance services, hunters, and other local volunteers to fight the insurgents. The quarterly security situation report was a clear vindication that the Nigerian armed forces and affiliate security agencies are on top of the situation. Anthony Forson, MTA News. Away from security matters, the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development and the National Emergency Management Agency have received essential products from two corporate organizations to support flood victims in the country. Elizabeth Omori reports. With the commencement of distribution of relief materials to flood victims, more organizations are contributing. The latest is the donation by the Care Pack family and Business Visa. 
We are very proud to list out these items, homemade, processed here, and also empowered the, 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 the producers as well, in a way. So uh, we are happy to be in this partnership. We are very passionate about also patronizing other Nigerian businesses to help Nigerians in actual need. Permanent Secretary, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, who received the items on behalf of the Ministry, handed over the items to NEMA for onward distribution. We'll give you feedback, either in photo, in video, or in writing, to show you how people have received and benefited from your, 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 your support. In times like this, it, it is the great Nigerian spirit helping neighbor that will give succor and rekindle hope amongst our brothers and sisters in distress. I want to also use this opportunity to assure you that the relief materials will be deployed immediately and directly to the end users. Items donated include noodles, vegetable oil, tomato pastes, mosquito nets, sanitizers, among others. The permanent secretary appealed to humanitarian organizations and individuals to assist in building stronger mechanisms against disasters. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. In the meantime, the Northeast Development Commission and ADC has shared food and non-food items to flood victims in Andamara State to cushion the effect of the disaster. Yusuf Jika reports. 174,000 persons in 254 communities of Adamao State were affected by the flood disaster this year. To cushion the effect of the flooding, the Northeast Development Commission has presented relief items to Adamao State government for onward distribution to the affected communities. The NEDC Managing Director Mohammed Konyal Kali said the gesture is part of the World Humanitarian Day earlier observed. We are reaching to the state government action on how we are going to collaborate to sustain the situation as it is and I'm sure the state government will very soon give us areas that need to be uh, intervened. Governor Amadou Morofentri of Adamawa State represented commended the foresight of the federal government in the provision of relief items. You've always been with us and you've always acted timely. Items shared are 10,000 bags of 25 kg rice, 3,000 gallons of vegetable oil, blankets, mats, children wears, wrappers, among others. In Yola, Yusuf Jika, NTN News. Now, in a bid to increase trade and strengthen cooperation between African countries, Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari and his Cameroon counterpart Paul Bia have jointly inaugurated a two-lane border bridge linking the two countries together at Unform in Ecom local government area of Cross River State. Udwak Atim reports that a 1.5 kilometers bridge is a major economic route connecting the Ecoras and Ekas, thereby facilitating investment and growth in the region. The Ecop Mfum Joint Border Bridge is one of the projects implemented by Nigeria and Republic of Cameroon with support of the Economic Community of West African State, ECOWAS, Economic Community of Central African State, ECAS, and other donor agencies aimed at improving transportation by removal of traffic barriers along Enugu Bamenda Corridor. Presidents Buhari and Paul Bia of Cameroon, who were represented, see the bridge as a confidence-building measure to increase the efficiency of the main transportation corridors in Africa. We have always been one, and therefore this can only help in facilitating uh, coming closer together um, and sharing the same uh, destiny. The bridge is a symbol of faithful cooperation between Cameroon and Nigeria. The symbolic presentation of the key by the ECOWAS representative is to open the project for use. This bridge is part of the state. We are not just connecting Nigeria and Cameroon. We are trying to connect the Lagos to Mombasa and Kenya. And this is the significance of this bridge. The two lane bridge constructed to replace the old hanging bridge will be working in conjunction with the joint border post, which was also inaugurated to improve cross border cooperation and security. 
from Ecom Local Government Area of Cross River State, Uduak Etam, NTN News. Elsewhere, the national leadership of the Vo Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship International has charged members to remain steadfast in prayer for Nigeria as she prepares for the 2023 general elections. National President Ifania Odedol, who gave the task at a press conference, commends efforts of the federal government at combating insecurity in the country. Serafina Okonomekwe reports. <laughs> The non-denominational global network of successful Christian business owners say the primary vision of the network is anchored on winning souls and advancing biblical ethics. On the forthcoming National Convention of the Full Gospel Businessmen Fellowship, with effects from 10th to 20th of November 2022, leadership says prayers will be offered for the nation, noting that God has put Nigeria at the brink of a major breakthrough in health, security and all other sectors. We want to tell you that the Western press are not doing not much good Correct. because they are painting very ugly picture of what is happening in Nigeria. Nigeria is many times safer than what is presented outside there. All the stakeholders urged Nigerians, especially the youths, to shun violence and vote buying while appealing to the electoral umpire to ensure free, fair and credible elections. I know that the convention is going to be a turning point for as many as we join and be part of it. Members from all over the world are expected to convert on Abuja mainly to intercede for the nation. In Abuja, Serafina Okun Umikwe, NT News. Weekend file returns after this timeout. If today we say that the number of police officers, hypothetically, the ones we have, are not enough, and we want to expand the police force, for example, by 100,000 more police officers, we cannot fund it if we don't have enough taxes to expand the size of the police. It has always been said by some of the, that maybe we have few number of police officers per 1,000 Nigerians. Our ratio is low based on statistics globally. Now, if you want to increase by just 100,000, that will require at least an additional expenditure of about 200 billion naira a year. So it's very, very important that we pay our taxes because that way we can ensure that we get the security that we all crave. All I do is win. I wake up, I win. I close my eyes and I win. Keep up on me, come on. You look great. Did you just come to the setup? Darling Super Star, great that they sell on fresh no matter what. If you want to become something, become a child again. Why be a patient? If you must worry, then worry about winning. Why worry about germs? When you come home, bring tales and stories. Why bring in germs? Shield your families from germs. When they talk is a part of every household bucket, then you and your family can stay protected from up to 100 illness causing germs. Everyday use of Dettol keeps my loved ones protected. Please, please listen. Please, I don't want to talk. Should we just give me one chance? <coughs> uh, now, if you play the food, we are shop now. Ah, it's different. Sure, you go make up for me tomorrow again. No, 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 no. Now you go to prepare my food from now on. Eh? <laughs> hmm. It's not just spicy stew. They're available for different, different pack sizes. Try them today. Different. You clean your teeth every morning, but that fresh breath feeling just doesn't last. The answer? Easy. You keep your teeth strong and healthy and give your mouth long-lasting fresh breath with new oral B 2 in 1 toothpaste. It helps strengthen your teeth and gives you long-lasting fresh breath. So fresh, feel fresh, and feel fresh. Stay strong, stay fresh. New oral B toothpaste for strong teeth and long-lasting fresh breath. Good morning, Nigeria.
Year after year, they have informed, educated, and entertained us when you needed information, knowledge, or an escape. From generation to generation, the Nigerian broadcasting industry has worked tirelessly to serve you. And now, this service will finally be recognized. You're right. This November, broadcasters all over Nigeria will gather for the maiden edition of the Nigerian Broadcasting Awards, an award ceremony set to reward hard work and unflinching excellence in the broadcast media. They have served and are still serving. It's time to say thank you. This award is organized by the Broadcasting Organizations of Nigeria. Bye. For more details, log on to www.tnbawards.ng and follow our social media handles at tnbawards. In a third Friday in 20 years. Simply out of this world. Yes, a four TV decoder, go tenner, and one month max subscriptions for only 6,900 naira. Watch all the 64 games live from Qatar on Go TV Super. It is no longer news that in Nigeria today, cybercrime, also called Yahoo Yahoo, has become the order of the day. Nigeria is losing billions of naira annually, and lives of innocent citizens are lost daily to this heinous act. In 2021, 80% of all convictions made by the EFCC were related to cybercrime and its rapidly altering in dimension and economic impact. It has become a serious threat to our society that requires immediate action. As the saying goes, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So parents, watch your children. But do you know that if you are found guilty of illegally accessing a computer system or network, you are liable to a fine of up to 10 million naira or five years in prison under the Nigeria Cybercrime Act 2015? Say no to cybercrime. We must all come together and play our part to put an end to this menace. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Thank you for staying with us. The suspension of eight month strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities ASU brought a deep relief to students, parents, businesses in the university community, and of course, Nigerians. In this report, Abdullahi Musa Suleja examines issues, the gaps, and what's next. On the 14th of October 2020, ASO announced to suspend its eight-month-old strike beginning from Monday 24th, three days after the pronouncement. As usual, the union embarked on the industrial action arising from grievances against the federal government. These include honoring the 2009 agreement, revitalization of the university system, some allowances among others, and the most latest, failure of government to pay salary arrears for the period of the strike now. The strike is over and academic activities are expected to gradually pick up. NTA News went to the University of Unity, the University of Abuja, where students confirm steady academic activities and hopeful of meet up with the calendar. I was really happy when I heard about the eruption. Lectures are going very well. Anyway. Now that school has resumed, we are very happy and at least we will get done with some things before next year. I can't say for other departments, but for my department, we are very disciplined. So when they give a date, lecture is going to resume, definitely is resuming. Um, our lecturers have been doing their best. We've been having assignments, we've been having lectures back to back. So definitely I feel like we'll be able to meet up. Yes, we have resumed, fully resumed. But the question many are asking is that, has incessant strike provided a solution to the smooth running of public tertiary institutions in Nigeria? Is there the possibility of another industrial action by the union in the nearest future? I hope this one, this time around, there will not be any attempt by any positive group to, to create something that will also make us uh, run into anything again. We hope that this will be the final. Certainly, there are some things in the university system that may never be the same again. What can be done to regain lost ground? Let government put attention in the university, upgrade the infrastructure to a reasonable level. They are also human beings. If they see that being done, I'm sure that they will stop further. But I just feel like it, it should be something that is going to last long and they should actually find like a forfeiting solution to what is going on at the moment. 
it is worthy of mention that the last eight month oil strike is on record as one of the wars that disrupted the academic calendar for a complete session. Abdullahi Musa Sileja, NTA News. The industrial action suspended by academic staff union of universities as to after eight months has presented challenges and pressure both f that both the students and lecturers are grappling with at one of the nation's famous ivory towers, the University of Lagos, Unilag. Amaka Owol visited the institution and filed this situation report. The University of Lagos has about 110 undergraduates and 129 postgraduate programs that have been activated with the call-off of the eight months industrial actions. A large number of the 62,215 students are now scattered all over the vicinity of the institution as lectures commenced in earnest at various departments in what seemed like a fire brigade approach. This is not easy for us, so we should try and they are rational too much. We're trying our best. We're reading every day. Things to cover is too much. So little time. Stay off your phone for a long time, you know. Just stay off Instagram, stay off social media and just be focused. Those with the mandate of imparting knowledge are making frantic efforts to meet up with the stipulated timing for examinations that are around the corner with long hours of lectures that extend into the weekends. It's a blended lecture, some room some true face to face okay. and um, I think um, we have been marching on the master's program all the programs are actually on and um, we hope to cover up because the first semester exam will soon come you know they are shifted to around December early December and we are trying to make sure we cover it uh, outstanding um, courses we miss during the strike. Lecturers have been struggling for classes. Like um, day before yesterday, I had lectures back to back from 8 till 5.30 p.m. As the nation's intellectual avatars continue to brace and tackle the effects of the prolonged strike, stakeholders are calling for improved industrial relations between the government and ASU in the interests and future of the educational system in the country. In Lagos, Amaka O, NTA News. And joining us now via Zoom is Professor Kabir Mato, a public affairs analyst. Professor Mato, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much and good evening. Well, of course, uh, the strike is over. Lecturers and students are back to the campuses and, of course, trying to meet up with lost academic time or calendar, as the case may be. How does that look hmm. at the moment? Well, I, I think it's uh, uh, first of, uh, uh, and foremost an unfortunate situation that uh, uh, the slightest provocation, uh, you know, the Academic Staff Union of Nigerian Universities will proceed on industrial action, uh, which has uh, you know, a tremendous impact uh, on the lives of uh, many, you know, hundreds of thousands of young boys and girls, uh, you know, across the country. Uh, I, I want to believe that, uh, you know, the resumption uh, of these universities uh, in the last uh, few weeks, uh, uh, that will come along with it uh, a lot of uh, uh, hardship, uh, just like you uh, had uh, a cross section of students, uh, you know, uh, and lecturers talking about uh, the uh, obvious difficulties that they are facing, and other to be able to cover up for the lost period. Uh, on one hand, and also, uh, you know, to bridge the gaps, you know, uh, that have been created as a result of the industrial action. I think. Uh, uh, it's important for both government and uh, you know the, the union to come to terms with the reality uh, that there are a lot of changes and obvious transformations that are required in terms of the management of tertiary uh, education in Nigeria. Otherwise, uh, uh, this may not be the last that Nigerians will be seeing uh, as far as this uh, unnecessary industrial actions are concerned. Uh, you know, so so it, it's obvious that. Uh, it's time for us to begin to strategize and change its strategies uh, in its negotiation and you know relationship with its employers. And on the other hand, also, it's time for the government in this country uh, to 
uh, face the reality and be able to tell the citizens whether it has the capacity to fund tertiary, uh, you know, education as, as it used to be. I, I know for sure that uh, the lower levels of education that, as far as I'm concerned, are even more important than uh, the, the tertiary education are uh, tremendously suffering uh, because of the diversion of resources uh, from basic education that is constitutionally enshrined and uh, you know, every Nigerian child at least is expected to have, uh, you know, uh, basic education, maybe from primary up to secondary school level. And then the issue of tertiary education is uh, perhaps a choice. It's not everyone that uh, would like to go to a college of education, polytechnic or university, uh, you know, for, but, but, but basic education. So I, I, I think government has to come out very clearly as it's reflected in several other areas that there are a lot of things that government cannot continue to shoulder as a matter of responsibility that it is still pretending it can shoulder. And the end result is what we see, uh, you know, uh, this type of uh, industrial action and all forms of crisis emerging from various segments of the society. My, my honest take on this is that, uh, you know, the, the, the federal government must be very clear about it. Uh, the way education a tertiary level was handled in this country in the 1970s and the 1980s and even 1990s uh, is uh, completely different from the contemporary reality. When we used to go to school, there was no private university in this country. But today, in every state, in every look and cranny of this country, you find the proliferation of several universities. And then while those in the public schools or the public tertiary institutions are staying at home, not attending classes, and the lecturers are going on strike, those in the private universities are going to school. So at the end of the day, what is really the problem? Who is, you know, fooling who? The fact of the matter is that it's very clear that Nigerian government, as it is currently constituted, does not have the financial capability to be able to fund tertiary education to the extent, you know, that it did in the 70s and the 1980s. And I, I also think that the unions in the university and other tertiary institutions must come to terms with the reality that the dynamic nature of the society has made it rather impossible for government to continue to shoulder all the responsibilities as it used to be in the past. So there has to be this open you know, negotiation and discussions on a frank manner so that both sides will understand you know, and then be able to uh, you know, chat a way forward in order to be able to save uh, especially the university system, uh, public university system from imminent collapse in this country. All right, uh, Professor um, Mato, we'll get back to you in a short while. But let's quickly tell us that the suspension of eight-month-old strike by the Academic Staff Union of Universities and the resumption of partial academic activities in some universities in the Northwest, which brings life back to these institutions, have also created accommodation crises among students. Dauda Mohammed reports that some students at Kaduna State University alleged to have been evicted from their hostels by the university authority on the ground that their rent has expired. <laughs> This is an indication that the university is back to life with commencement of academic activities. The academic environment is particularly charged with students undergoing registration while others have commenced lectures. I'm happy that school has uh, resumed finally. However, they are faced with accommodation challenges which they say is affecting them. The owners of the house have increased their rent fee which is not nice here. In our lodge, so they increase our rent. My exams have been cancelled, and it will really take a, a a long time before the whole school setting goes back to normal. They already start putting pressure on us to pay for the um, rent because they were like, okay, that they don't have any, they don't have any business with the ongoing strike. Business operators are also worried over the increase in prices, which is likely to hamper patronage. And since I expensive. The atmosphere at the Amadi Bello University Zaria looks similar with what is obtainable at CASU, as lectures are yet to start with registration exercise for new and postgraduate students ongoing. You no, know, a lot of time has been wasted, but I still believe in the little time we have, we can still achieve something out of it. So now that we are back on the campus, we are just here for the registration. Business environment is a little bit vibrant with students patronizing various eateries. Operators say, though the university is not in full swing, 
with academic activities, but so far, so good. God is still helping us, they are back, small, small. From Bayro University, Kano, students have resumed following the suspension of the strike by ASU. I'm happy concerned they gave us three weeks for resumption. I'm a bit nervous. I feel relieved because I've, by this time we are supposed to have, been, have graduated by now. The campus is lively as you can see. Staff are cooperating. Uh, though we have not been paid their salaries which they are entitled to. Before commencement of full-scale academic activities in these universities, students will continue with other activities to keep themselves busy. Dauda Mohamed, NTA News. We're still with uh, Professor Kabir Mato, public affairs analyst, and we're discussing the resumption of uh, academic activities at the U federal universities across Nigeria. Of course, um, one is constrained to ask this, Professor Mato, because uh, we are hearing that uh, some lecturers received half uh, payments in terms of their salaries for October, while some got full salaries. Now, going forward, what does that portend? Well, I, I think part of the agreement reached between ASU and government is that, uh, you know, government is going to pay the salaries uh, of, uh, you know, members of academic staff that have been on strike for a period of seven to eight months. Uh, at least that's what we were informed, uh, you know, as the major uh, line of understanding between the two parties when the agreement to call off the strike was, uh, you know, reached. Uh, and, uh, of course, the news going around all over the country today suggests that some have been paid uh, you know, half month, and what uh, members of the academic staff, you know, are thinking of uh, is basically that perhaps the, the half month salary that has been paid uh, only represents the period that they have worked for. I, I for one, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't like to support the idea that people should, uh, you know, unilaterally proceed on strike, and then while they are on strike, they are not working, and then they continue to, uh, you know, uh, uh, enjoy enjoy salary. The labor laws are, are very clear about that, but. Asu keeps arguing that it's not about teaching, it's also about community service, extension service, it's also about research, etc., etc. Now, I, I, I don't know to what extent this, you know, uh, argument uh, is uh, convincing to the extent that they can enjoy the salaries uh, of the period that they have not been working. This is this, this really very uh, crucial. And I think one of the major issues that, you know, affecting us in this country today uh, is that we don't seem to have regard for uh, you know, uh, uh, establish laws. Uh, laws must be respected by every individual. Uh, uh, if, if you don't respect it, uh, then it's unfortunate. But as long as government agrees that, uh, uh, you know, to back up from its initial stand that it was not going to pay salaries of uh, university teachers while they were on strike, and then as part of the negotiation or agreement arrived at, uh, they agreed they were going to pay, and I, I think they should... Uh, you know, have their words uh, banned. But, uh, you know, we must come up with uh, definite actions and strategies to ensure that uh, ways and means, uh, the future occurrences of such uh, unnecessary actions, uh, you know, are averted in order to save the public education system in this country. Like I said, uh, we are going across opposites. While the private sector universities are uh, going on with their activities and, you know, tens of thousands of students are also admitted uh, throughout uh, these universities in Nigeria. The public institutions have been closed down for quite a while. And, uh, yeah, you know, so that, that brings to the fact that there is a need for both government and us to sit down and look at the issues dispassionately with a view to arresting this situation before they get you know, uh, to the state that they got in the last eight months. I, 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 I think there must be sincerity of purpose on behalf of government. They must talk very frankly, not just to us, yeah. but to Nigeria, to be able to convince the citizenry on the difficulties that are at stake and the inability of government to be able to foot the bills, you know, uh, in every sector uh, of the tertiary education that you know, was previously being, uh, you know, uh, handled by government. Uh, okay. In the 1970s and the 1980s, this used to be the situation. But exactly. The explosion, you know, population and so on and so forth, really have made it impossible. And then the competing demands from the various sectors of the national economy, and even within the educational sector, I insist that the most basic education that every Nigerian child is entitled to is the basic education to primary and even secondary school, so that at least 
literacy will be achieved. Okay, we would like to thank you immensely, Professor Kabir Mato, for your some um, submissions tonight on the topic. Thanks indeed. Thank you very much. We'll be speaking with uh, Professor Kabir Mato, Public Affairs Analyst, and up next on Weekend File Link Sports Update. The Ghana state government has reiterated its commitment towards promoting and supporting sports activities in the state. Hamad Muhammad reports that the deputy governor of the state, Umar Namadi, made this known while receiving the touch of unity meant to raise awareness on the forthcoming national sport festival in Dutsi. I fully preferred and then we are, our contingent will be sponsored to uh, participate in this festival. Therefore, well, uh, with the constraint of funding, definitely funding is a constraint, but that does not mean the Gulf state will not participate. And in Lagos, about 25,000 women from all walks of life are expected to feature in the seventh edition of the 10 kilometer Lagos Women Run. Organizers say the race will commence from the Tafa Balewa Square through Victoria Island Axis. And terminate at the Mobology Johnson Arena on Nikon. And the little runner will always finish before the um, uh, the fun runners. So the difference will be there. And um, the officials that will be on ground, they know how this assessment is carried out. The Lagos State uh, Athletics Association has put in place all the necessary technical inputs from race marshals to race wardens to, you know, I mean, the timer and everything will be there. In football, Baeza Queens wrapped up preparations for their third group game at the ongoing Car Women's Champions League in Morocco Saturday with emphasis on goal scoring skills and flawless defense techniques. The Nigerian side needs the maximum point at stake to be sure of a semi final ticket on Sunday when the team lock ons with Wadi Degla of Egypt. From the English Premier League, Manchester City moved to the top of the log with 32 points after a 2 1 victory over Fulham. Saturday, same day, Leeds United defeated Bournemouth 4 3. The affairs between Nottingham Forest and Bradford ended two goals apiece. With sports updates, Olum De Gutola, NT News. We can now check out weather outlook for Sunday. Hello, a quick look at the weather forecast for Sunday. Sunny and hazy atmosphere is still the prevailing weather over the northern region. However, patches of clouds are anticipated over the north central down to the southern states with more cloud cover over the coastal belts and intervals of sunshine over the north central region. Later during the day, there are chances of isolated thunderstorms to parts of Delta rivers, Bielsa, Aquaibom, and Cross River states. Other parts of the country are expected to remain the same weather wise. Let's have a look at the air quality index. I'm Theodore Aitzen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being